So the format of this presentation is to provide a general overview on the current state and future progress of pure mycelium materials. And uh, I will also shortly introduce my research topic. First, uh, I will introduce mycelium materials and go deeper in three areas. Fermentation strategy, um, the mycelium leather application, which is one of the most promising so far, and after that, uh, processing and functionalization of uh, the mycelium. In the second part, I will go over three areas ripe for development. First, uh, improving the production strains. Second, discussing upscaling challenges. And lastly, future applications. So let's start with what is mycelium. So mycelium is uh, the root-like structure of filamentous fung fungi. Mycelium refers to the dense network of hyphae, uh, which are the individual filaments. For the application of growing mycelium materials, whitewort fungi are very popular because they grow on a wide range of lignocellulosic biomass. The composite mycelium materials are composed of both the mycelium and the substrate. So in this flowchart here, you can see the production process where a mold is filled with a substrate and afterwards inoculated with a fungi. And at the end of the growth, you end up with a stiff and lightweight material, very similar to styrofoam. Now, the use of mycelium composites as packaging alternatives for styrofoam is a wonderful solution um, for the environment especially since uh, styrofoam is a nightmare for recycling. As, as some of you might know, it fills up 30% of uh, the global landfills. Um, then it also leaches harmful chemicals in the environment, and it can also take up to 500 years to decompose. And mycelium composites are biodegradable and are produced in a circular process by upcycling agricultural and forestry waste. Now let's jump over to the pure mycelium materials. These are solely composed of fungal organisms uh, without any substrate particle. Some examples of pure mycelium materials are leather-like uh, materials, some foam or sponge-like, and uh, lastly, um, some uh, are also tender and uh, can be used as uh, meat alternatives. So let's explore now some uh, fermentation strategies to grow the mycelium materials. So filamentous fungi uh, used in biotechnological applications have been grown in bioreactors fermentation setup for several decades already. This is a very mature technology which allows a high degree of control over process parameters and uses liquid substrates to grow the organism. In the left picture, you can see how uh, researchers at uh, VTT are able to have a continuous production of uh, mycelium tissue um, using bioreactor fermentation. Recent innovations in solid state fermentation showed new phenotypes of pure mycelium foam that grows out of the substrate at specific conditions. A concentration of around 5% gaseous CO2, relative high uh, temperature for fungi then, of about 30%. Uh, of course, it can depend a little bit on uh, which species is used. And also a high relative humidity between 40 to 99%. And finally, directed air flows and deposition of solids on the top surface of the culture enable to uh, acquire such phenotypes. Now, the driving force behind uh, the outward growth of the mycelium is supposedly due to uh, the CO2 gradients created by cellular respiration during the growth. Um, inside the substrate container, 
combined with the already high CO2 concentration in the growth chamber, me, um, pulls the mycelium outwards. Now, here are some of my own results for uh, growing this foam-like phenotype in a very rudimentary DIY setup, uh, where I managed to achieve uh, somewhere like one to two centimeters of um, nice aerial hefe growth. So this setup is uh, located inside a CO2 incubator on the left, and it is composed of two boxes connected by hose with a fan circulating uh, mist. Now, when fully optimized, it is possible to achieve big volumes of foam in uh, vertical farm setups. All right, now let's dive into uh, the mycelium leather application. Mycelium leather is a great alternative to animal hides and plastic leather. The ecological footprint of leather is coupled to the animal farming industry, which produces enormous quantities of greenhouse gas emissions and is also responsible for deforestation. This application has gained a lot of momentum because the global market for leather and leather goods is roughly estimated at $394 billion annually. So it's a big motivation for companies. Now, making a leather with mycelium can be achieved in several ways. When grown in a bioreactor setup, mycelium can be um, printed as a paste. Uh, when growing the mycelium foams on solid substrates, these can be compressed into a thin and compact tissue. It is also possible to stimulate or manipulate uh, hyphae to create microscopic organized patterns uh, similar to weaving uh, tissue or uh, rope twisting, which enhance the material properties of the tissue. And then uh, lastly, we can also integrate ex existing materials into the mycelium. It can be uh, natural fibers, polylactic acids, or uh, synthetic polymers. Processing and functionalization of the mycelium. The most important element of the mycelium is its cell wall, which provides a great structural support. The cell wall of uh, fungi is composed of uh, manoproteins on top, uh, beta glucans, and then also uh, it's all linked with uh, chitin and chitosan polymer to the cell membrane. Without going too deep into the details, uh, a classical treatment process would consist of uh, deproteinate and deacetylate, um, afterwards introducing cross-linking and uh, finally plasticizing material to keep it flexible and pliable. So the chitin and chitosan backbone of the cell wall is the major uh, polymer for chemical modification of uh, the mycelium. Now oh, let's uh, go over three areas ripe for development. Um, firstly, improving production strains. When using a solid state fermentation setup, white rot basidiomycetes are very popular candidates because they are champions in degrading lignocellulose. Uh, some examples are Iconoderma, Trameletes, Pleurotus, Poems, or even Schizophilum. Um, in bioreactor fermentation, you can also use these white rot basidiomycetes, but certain popular species of ascomycetes, which are already used for several decades, like Penicillium, Asper Aspergillus, or Trichoderma, can also be used for um, biomass generation. Besides, the already described species which is probably only 2 to 4% of uh, the estimated existing fungal biodiversity on Earth, there are many more unknown species who could provide new properties for future mycelium material applications. Um, another way is genetic engineering. So genetic engineering is the major focus of my PhD project, um, but I will keep it simple. So another way to improve the production strains is through engineering um, the genome of these organisms. Fungi are not the most friendly organism to genetically modify, but recent advances in uh, 
In CRISPR-Cas9, technology enables to bypass some tedious PC-specific requirements by using in vitro assembled ribonucleoprotein complexes. These RNPs are transfected inside the protoplasts, which you uh, obtain, so the protoplast you obtain by enzymatically digesting the fungal cell wall, and this results in spherical cells. Integration of uh, heterologous genes can either happen through non-homologous enjoining or uh, homology direct repair. A nice example of genetic modification resulting in improved material properties was demonstra demonstrated by Apples et al. In a mutant carrying a deletion for the hydrophobin gene, material properties shifted from uh, natural materials to thermoplastic-like properties. So a very nice uh, example. Now let's talk about some upscaling challenges. It is hard to compete with the uh, low cost of plastics so therefore, it's very important to think at production cost optimization when building facilities to grow mycelium materials. Um, some of the most important elements uh, are to be uh, are uh, that you need to be closely located to uh, a source of substrates to avoid uh, unnecessary long uh, import of substrates. And so you. It's better to couple this um, with uh, agricultural or food processing industries. For the solid state fermentation of mycelium foam that requires CO2 inside the incubation chamber, there would be an advantage to be coupled to a CO2 polluting plant, for example, in order to upcycle this waste stream. Lastly, there is already existing infrastructure used for edible mushroom production or bioreactors used for biotechnological applications it could, which could be also uh, used for this application. Now coming to the last segment, uh, future applications with mycelium materials. So there are already quite uh, a num number of big names companies experimenting with mycelium and creating prototypes of future widespread consumer products like uh, Hermes, Adidas, Lululemon or Stella McCartney. In a more distant um, future, maybe we'll be able to consume mycelium-based meat alternatives or even go to Mars with uh, radiation shielding grown from uh, engineered melanin-producing mycelium. So, thanks you, thank you for your attention and I would be happy to answer some questions.